don't think I can stand any more stairs. What are you talking about? It's only one flight. Uh, but after all of this, uh, it adds up. Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean. Oh, boy, please tell me that was the end of it. That's the end of it. <laughs> the last one. Really? Now all I have to do is unpack all of this. That's the trouble with uh, moving. It's all no the packing problem. and unpacking. <sighs> so what do you think? What do you mean what I think? I think it's terrific. And the furniture? Oh, it's all wonderful. It's spacious. It's, um... Oh, the gallery's just downstairs. It's almost perfect. What do you mean, almost? Well, there's one thing that's missing. What's that? You. It's not going to be home without you. Well, here I am. That'll change soon. Mm -hmm. And then we will be together. expect to see you here. May I come in? Oh, of course, sir. Please. Please do. Um, can I get you a cup of coffee? No, thank you. You didn't come in to work today? Uh, no, sir, I didn't. I won't ask. Guess you have your reasons. Yeah, yes, sir, I do. Sandy, there's something very important that I want to ask you. Yes? I had a talk with Ada today. She told me about something that means a great deal to me. What's that, Mr. Corey? Are you my son, Sandy? Hi, you've reached 555-3397. No one is available to come to the phone right now, but at the sound of the tone, you can leave your name, the time you called, your phone number, and any message, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for calling. Hi, Jerry, this is Blaine. I'm over at Clarice's. Will you call me when you can? very much more human and very much more interesting. You all right? Yeah. I was just looking at this album. It brings back a lot of memories. Uh, 
Is that you? <laughs> yes. You're all arms and legs and braces. How old? I don't know. I guess about ten. That was my favorite dress. I had asked Mom to get it for me, and she said she couldn't because it was too expensive. And then I woke up one Easter morning, and there it was on my chair. She said that every little girl should have a new dress for Easter. Already starting to learn how to be beautiful. No, well, not very much. <laughs> I was always too skinny. Mm. That's my graduation picture. A little filling out there? Well, yeah, a little. I was really into milkshakes and um, french fries with lots of ketchup. Ada fed you that, huh? No. No, the kids used to go um, downtown from school and we used to stuff ourselves. You know what? I really don't know a lot about your past. Well, there's not much to tell. I had a pretty ordinary childhood. Should and to be. think of it, I don't know much about yours either. And we should have a lot of fun finding out, shouldn't we? Yeah, I think we should. I look forward to it. So do I. Who's that? Ah, uh, Steve Frame. I was married to him. It sounds like you still have feelings for him. Oh, he's, um, he's Jamie's father. But how do you feel about it? He died in a, in a helicopter crash in Australia. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to bring back any heavy memories. No, it's all right. I wasn't married to him then. I, I was uh, with Mac, and he had gone back to Alice. Alice, is that... Russ Matthews' sister? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, uh, he and Alice were married before I married him. Wow. It's pretty complicated. Maybe sometime you'll tell me about it? Mm-hmm, sometime. But how do you feel about it? Well, I don't think about him very much, except that he is... Jamie's father. May I sit down? Oh, of course, please. You know, I, I think I'm going to take you up on that uh, that cup of coffee, if it still stands. Sure, sure, just give me a second. Yeah, got a cup. <clears throat> there you are. Thank you. Won't you sit down? Uh... Thanks anyway, Mr. Corey. I think I'd rather stand. Sandy, a long time ago, I suppose about 27 years now, I met a wonderful woman. Her name was Miriam Sanderson. We knew each other for a very short time, but we were immediately attracted to each other. I was very lonely then, and so was she. She'd lost a husband she loved very much. Missing in action in Korea and presumed dead. I suspect now that her heart was still with him, but be that as it may, we became very close, even in that very short time. I thought I loved her very much. She loved you too. When... We discovered that she was pregnant. I was wildly excited. I wanted to get married immediately. But it never happened. Why? She disappeared. The very day that I went to her apartment together, we were going to the Justice of the Peace. She was gone. I never knew why. I never knew where. Searched for her for months. Tried to have her traced. Nothing. It was as if she just vanished from the face of the earth as far as I was concerned. I thought about her constantly. I wondered what she was doing, how she was managing. I never even knew if the baby was born. I never knew if it was a boy or a girl. If I had a a son or a daughter. You had a son, Mr. Corey. Miriam Sanderson. 
was my mother. So you say you need help. What would you like me to do? I'm not sure. If you like, I can arrange for you to see a psychiatrist. We have a couple of very good people at the hospital right now. No, no, I don't think I'm ready for that yet. I mean, I haven't had any pills in weeks. Mm. It's just that uh, I'm afraid. Of what? That it might start all over again. What do you mean? Well, I can feel the pressure starting up again, and sometimes I'm tempted to uh, go, go back to the pills again. can't let that happen, Jamie. I know I shouldn't let it happen. Look, you've decided to stop, and you did it. Yes, but it's been a very rough few weeks. Well, of course it was. Nobody said it was going to be easy. But at least you quit on your own. I almost killed myself. How'd it happen? I lost track of what I was taking. I, I needed to sleep, so I took some downers. But I was so wired already that, uh, that I still couldn't sleep. And uh, I couldn't remember what I'd taken before, so I took some more. And it depressed my whole system. But my, my... I stopped breathing. Why, why didn't you die? What happened? My roommate found me. Got me to the hospital. But it was touch and go for a while. So you think that, that scared you enough to stop? Scared isn't the word. It terrified me to think what I'd done to myself. I almost died. And for what? For someone else's expectations of me. Yeah, well, Rick Mack has never imposed his expectations onto me. Yes, I know that. But, but you imposed on yourself what you thought Mack wanted of you. But you're not doing that anymore. You're on the right road. Don't go back. Well, what about you? I mean, well, could you ever go back? No chance. No, I don't take any kind of pill anymore, not even aspirin. I think I know what's wrong with me. What? Well, I don't think I had enough of the scare to keep me off of it. Don't even think that, James. Look, I don't want to think that, but I don't know what... I can just feel that pressure coming on all the time. Well, then that's, that's why you've got to talk to somebody who can help you. I know, that's why I'm talking to you. No, I mean really talk to somebody. I can talk to you about my problems till I'm blue in the face, but you need somebody to counsel you about this. No, wait, wait, a psychiatrist? Or a psychologist? No, no, ja thank you, Rick. Jamie, listen to me. You have got to talk to someone, not a friend who can give you some constructive advice on how to cope with what no, you're going I through. I don't want to see a psychiatrist. There is no stigma attached to it. I know, maybe not, but I won't do it, Rick. Well, then you've got to talk to somebody else. I could. What about Russ Matthews? Um, yeah, maybe. Listen to me. If you feel like you're getting boxed in, then, then you've got to do it soon. All right? Yeah. Maybe. Okay. I am your father? I believe so, Mr. Corey. <sighs> well, how long have you known? Ah, uh, since, um... Since last December, just before Christmas. And how did you find out? Well, before my mother died, she... She wrote several letters. And one of them, she said that, that you were my real father. But I didn't receive any of them until after her death, so I never got to ask her anything about it. But how could you wait so long before you tried to find me? I, uh... I couldn't get away from... From the situation I was in. But, Sandy, I don't understand. When you when you did get here, all those weeks you lived with Rachel and me, why didn't you tell me then? I wanted to. Believe me, Mr. Corey, but... I didn't know how you'd react. I, I didn't even know whether you knew I was alive or not. And I, I, I didn't want to mess up the life you had. And there was another reason. What? I'm not very proud of the life I've led, Mr. Corey, and... I guess I was afraid you wouldn't accept me. Not accept you? You're my son. Let me... Let me try to understand this. When you came to Bay City, you did intend to tell me? Yes, sir. But what changed your mind? I didn't think it would serve any purpose. Besides, 
There were a lot of people who could have gotten hurt. People I care for. Like Jamie? Yeah. Mr. Corey, Jamie is your son, and he needs you right now. He needs you a lot. And I don't want to do anything that will interfere with that. There's just so many things I want to ask you. You're leaving. Yes, sir. Why? For a lot of reasons. Are you in some kind of trouble? Yes, I am. Won't you let me try to help you? Mr. Corey, I think it would just be best if you didn't get involved in it, especially now. Look, Sandy, I've got so many things I've got to ask you. I mean, there are so many things that need to be said between us. Now, maybe this isn't the right time, so I won't press you, but I want you to understand that if there is anything in the world that I can do that will allow you to stay here with me so we can get to know each other, I'll do anything. Mr. Corey... I am in a lot of trouble right now. Can't you tell me about it? There are people looking for me. And if they find me, they will kill me. Why? I'll tell you that, Mr. Corey, and I'll accept your help. On one condition. What condition is that? That you tell no one who I am. That we keep the fact that I am your son between you and me. Jerry, this is Larry. Give me a call, will you? I need to talk to you. Hi, Jerry. This is Blaine. I'm over at Clarice's. Will you call me when you can? I'll call them later. What I really want to do is talk to you now. Yes, Jerry, I think, I think there's something we have to talk about. You mean you want to talk about us? Yes. I think it's very important that we do. So do I. There are some things that I want to explain to you. But we don't have to stand here. Why don't we sit down? Can I get you anything? Oh, no. Jerry, I have to know how you feel about Blaine. Honestly? Of course. I don't know how I feel. But that doesn't mean that I don't love you. Jerry. It's just... I can't believe you. you. You're not sure how you feel about your ex-wife, but you love me. Well, what does that mean? How do you divide up this love you're feeling? 50-50? 60-40? How? You have got to believe me. I love you very much. Just that right now, I feel like I'm being torn apart inside. Look, I know that Blaine needs for me to support her now. And I... To love her? I love you, Kit. You have to know that. Strange. I do know that. I really do. I mean, I believe it right now at this instant that you love me. Sometimes it's not enough. What does that mean? Jerry, I love you too. But that's not enough for you. Part of you still loves Blaine. I can never fill that need. Not now. Not ever. I love you. And I need you. No. You love me. But you don't need me. It's Blaine. Somehow there's a part of you that needs her, needing you. And until you can deal with that, I don't think there's any way that we can 
of anything together. Nothing permanent. Nothing that we can build on. But we do have something that we can build on. Look, we care for each other. Do we care enough? Jerry, if you had to choose today, right now, between Blaine and me, who would it be? The role of Cecile Frame is now being played by Nancy Frangione. This time I'm late. I don't know. Uh, hello? Hello, Marianne. This is Cecile. Is Jamie still there? Uh, no, he isn't, Cecile. How long ago did he leave? Well, he was gone when I got back an hour ago. Is anything wrong? No, nothing's wrong. I'm sorry to have bothered you, Marianne. No bother. Good night. Good night. What was that all about? Apparently, Jamie hasn't gotten home yet. expect to find you here. Well, Louise let me in. You don't mind, do you? Of course not. I wanted to uh, find out if you talked to Sandy. I did. And? Oh, I saw a lot to assimilate in one evening. Ada. Then he told you that he's your son? Yes. He confirmed everything that you had told me. I just don't know if I can find the words to express how I'm feeling to you. I can imagine. All my life I've wanted a son, a natural-born son. And now you have one. Now I have one. It's going to take a lot of getting used to. And I think I'm going to enjoy very much getting used to it. How much did Sandy tell you? A great deal. I have to give the boy credit. He explained why he had refused to reveal himself to me before. It must have been very hard for him. Well, what happens now? Well, I persuaded him to stay on here in Bay City. I'm going to help him in any way I can. What does that mean? One of the reasons that Sandy wanted to leave was because that he believes that his life is in danger here. Well, what kind of danger? All he would tell me is that he's been involved with some kind of dangerous characters in the past, and he took something from one of them. What? I don't know that, but I do know that he's, he thinks that they're going to still try to track him down and find him and it. What, well, does he think that these characters are here in Bay City? No, not yet. At least they're not, but somehow I got the impression that they had been involved with Jordan Scott. Well, why was Sandy involved with gangsters? I don't know, Ada. But I do know that he needs protection, and I'm going to provide it for him. How? I persuaded him to move in the house here with me until this whole thing blows over. Look, don't you think this is something that the uh, police should take care of? Well, yes. That's what I said to him, but he doesn't want the police involved any more than they are. Well... Uh, how are you going to protect him any better than the police can? I'm not saying I can do that, but I am going to hire guards to be with him all the time until we feel that he's safe. Mac, I, uh... I went to you this afternoon to tell you about Sandy because I thought you had to know. I hope things work out between you and Sandy. But there's somebody else we have to worry about, too. Who? Jamie. What's going to happen to him? How is Jamie going to feel when he finds out who Sandy is? He's not going to find out. Well, why won't he find out? Because Sandy asked me not to tell him, and I agreed for now. Jamie needs more time to get his life back together. Well, with you and Rachel getting a divorce, 
He really needs you. Jamie needs to feel he belongs to somebody now. But Ada, I will always be here for Jamie, for goodness sakes. He's as much my son as Sandy is. I hope you always feel that way. Jamie, I called Rick and Mary Ann's. They said you left over an hour ago. I was uh, out driving. Mm. Doing what? Thinking. You didn't have to wait up for me. Oh, I don't like going to sleep not knowing where my husband's going to spend the night. What's that supposed to mean? You know what it means. Cecile, I'm very tired. Let's not play games. Oh, I don't consider it a game when a man doesn't bother to tell his wife where he's going to be and then stays out all hours of the night you knew or doesn't I... bother to come home at all. You knew where I was. And that's another thing. I didn't appreciate your humiliating me like that in front of Rick and Mary. I wasn't trying to humiliate you. I was trying to talk to Rick. About what? You know about what? The problems I've been having. Are you sure that's all? All right, what are you getting at? I just thought that uh, maybe you and Rick were talking about something else. Or should I say somebody else? I don't want to talk about this right Jamie, now. don't turn your back on me. I want to know if you were talking about Marianne. Marianne? Oh, don't play dumb, Jamie. It's not very becoming of you. I know that you stayed at her apartment the night before her wedding. Oh, not going to deny it? No, I'm not going to deny it. Then I did you, spend the night you there. You admit it. Yes, I admit it, but there's nothing to be ashamed of. I went over there because I had just lost my job at the ledger and I needed to talk to someone. But nothing happened, all right? We talked. Oh, I'll bet nothing happened. Cecile, I don't want to discuss this anymore. Jamie, was it the first time? What? Was it the first time you spent the night there? I know that you had seen Marianne before we were married. And heaven knows what was going on behind my back after we were married. Nothing happened before or after. We've always been just good friends. Oh, that's very touching, really. But I don't imagine you'd remember anyway. What with all those little pills you were taking? Marianne, the one who supplied you with those? I don't want you talking about it that way. Aren't we getting protected? But I suppose that's only natural, hmm? What with her being pregnant and all. Are you finished? Not quite. Just one more question. What? I know that Rick and Marianne were married rather quickly because she was pregnant. Is Rick really the father? be all right now. I'm here. There's nothing for you to be afraid of. I just felt so terrible at that party. Everybody was staring at me. No, they weren't. They were just worried about you. I wish I'd never gone. <sighs> that was my fault. I never should have asked you to go. It was too soon. You weren't ready to get out yet. Please hold me. I just feel so alone. I need somebody to talk to. So, have Kit take your bringing Blaine to the party? Not very well. Took Kit over the loft to talk to her. Eh? <laughs> we talked. She told me that she doesn't want to continue our relationship the way it is. I'm sorry to hear that. You know, you can hardly blame Kit for the way she's been acting. Oh, what's that supposed to be? I'm just saying you've been spending a lot of time with my sister. 
What, and you don't approve? Whoa, buddy, look. Look, I didn't say that. Uh, then what are you saying? Don't get so defensive, Jerry. You know, I'm the person who wanted you and Blaine to get together in the first place. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to jump at you. It's all right, Jerry. I just want to ask you something. What? Where do you stand with my sister right now? I honestly don't know, Larry. There is a part of me that says, maybe. I mean, now that things are different, maybe we could make a go of it. And there's another part of me that's really afraid. Of what? Getting hurt. Maybe you're just afraid to take a chance? <laughs> yeah, that could be part of it. Look, I'll tell you, buddy, I, I don't know how you feel right now, and I don't want to tell you what to do. But my sister needs somebody a lot. And the way things are looking, you're about all she's got. I hope I didn't get you out of bed. Oh, not at all, Max. As a matter of fact, I was working on a brief. I wouldn't have asked you over here so late if it weren't important. Well, you made it sound very urgent. It is. Something wrong at the complex? No. Actually, this has to do with Sandy Alexander. Sandy? What about him? You intend using him as a witness in Blaine Ewing's trial, don't you? Oh, definitely. He's one of our key witnesses. He is the only one we've got who can give testimony about Jordan Scott and the people he worked for. Then I think you ought to know he believes his life is in danger. Are you sure? Yes, I talked to him this evening. He's certain that he's being tracked down by some people he was involved with in the past. He feels that they will kill him if they know he's going to be called to testify. Actually, he was ready to leave Bay City when I walked into his apartment. Oh, Mac, we can't let him go. I mean, without him... I don't think Blaine has a very strong case. Well, I think you should know that I have persuaded him to stay. But as a result, we are going to need your help. Oh, well, of course. What can I do? I've asked Sandy to move in here at the house with me. Well, I mean, do you think that's wise under the circumstances? I can't think of any alternative, can you? Well, not at the moment. The important thing at the moment is that Sandy be protected. And I'm going to provide that protection for him here. And you'd like me to do what? I want guards at this house. I want them here 24 hours a day. And I want someone always with Sandy, at least until after the trial, so that he can be protect protected. Can you arrange that for me? Of course. I'll get on it the first thing in the morning. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I owe this boy a lot. This is my chance to repay him. All right, Mac, I'll call you as soon as everything is set. I'll wait for your call. And again, I appreciate your coming over so late. Hi, Night Owl. I thought you were going to make a night of it. Uh, no. I have to work tomorrow. Hmm. Where's Mary Ann? Oh, she's exhausted. She went to bed. I want you to know we worked very hard to make sure you didn't have to clean up anything. I see. Thank you. Hmm. What are you still doing up? Uh, I was too worried to sleep. Just catching up on some reading. Where's Jerry? I thought he was going to take you home. Uh, I, I decided to take a taxi. Is everything all right? I'll be okay in a minute. You want to tell me about it? <laughs> tell me about it. It's Jerry. What, what happened? Is he all right? I've lost him. Look, maybe you haven't lost him. You're not making much sense of it. get you something. I, I don't want anything. Okay, you don't have to have, have anything. Just, just calm down and tell me what happened. We went to the loft. Well, I knew you were going there. A and we talked. Well, I didn't think you would have sit there and stare at each Wait, other. Rick, this isn't funny. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to... Just tell me what happened. Well, we talked about us and Blaine. You mean his bringing her here? Oh, not tonight. 
her coming back into his life and all the problems. What did, what did you say to him? I told him that I think he needs Blaine more than he needs me. And, and what did he say? Nothing. It's true. He couldn't even answer me when I asked him if he could choose between us. It's not a very fair question, do you think? Fair? Ricky can't love us both equally at once. He has to decide. Maybe, maybe he can't make up his mind right now. I think he already has. Look. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe you haven't lost him. Maybe when this whole trial thing is over, he'll, 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 he'll remember who he is and, and he'll remember that he loves you. Yes, maybe you're right. Not that time. I don't know what this will have done to me. sandwich? Baby, you know, you've been through a lot. You've got to keep your strengths up. You have to eat and rest. You're going to get sick. No. He's playing big brother again. I can't help it. I've been doing it for so long. What's bothering you? I'm scared. Of course you are, baby. You wouldn't be human if you weren't. And I feel all alone. Now, you're not alone. You know that. You got a lot of people who love you, who care about what happens to you. You got me, Clarice, Jerry. That's just for starters. I think that just about covers it. And it's all me. I mean, if it weren't for me, all the people that I care about, you and Clarice, Kit and Jerry, they could get on with their lives. This whole mess is all my fault. Really, come on, don't blame yourself. What happened, happened. We're going to help you get out of it. You just have to trust the people you love to take care of you. It's very important to me that, that we all help you out. Thanks for being here for me. It means a lot to me. I wouldn't have it any other way. Oh. Well, Matt, where have you been? I thought I was going to have to wait up all night for you. That must have been some kind of party. Nah, I was at the party for a little while, then I had to go to work. You know. Wait. What are you doing here? <laughs> you were... uh, plans were changed, buddy. Well, you mean you're gonna stay in Bay City? Yeah, for a little while. <laughs> at, at least until at least until after uh, the trial's over. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. But uh, I don't think I'm gonna be staying here. Well, we're gonna be staying. Now listen, see, I, I think it'd be too dangerous for me to stay here for both of us. See, too many people know I live here, so I think I'm gonna have to move out. Well, where are you going to stay? Well, what do you well mean? Matt Corey's offered to let me stay at his house. He thinks it'd be safer there. Matt Corey? What? I don't, what, what do you mean? I don't understand. Yeah, I can't really uh, explain it any more than that, man. You know, I just can't. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? 
No, man, Joe, it's not no. that I don't trust you, but... Uh, well, then what? But what? Look, Joey, I told you about how dangerous those people I was involved with are. Hmm? The less you know, the better. See, I don't want any of my friends getting hurt because of my problems. You know, you understand? No. No? Well, no, yeah, I do. It doesn't, doesn't matter. I'm just glad you're going to be staying here. Hey, yeah. thanks, Joey. Yeah, well, let's drink to that. Yeah. <laughs> How's Matthew? All of that banging around didn't uh, disturb him in the least. I don't think it's taken shape. Really, it has. Thanks to you. Without your help, I would have been unpacking things for days. Glad I was here. So am I. I like the feeling that we're going to be together. Yes, we will. I better be going. It's after midnight. Is it really that late? I'm afraid so. You can't stay a little while longer. No. Don't forget. We promised. We wouldn't stay together until after your divorce is final. Yes, I know, but this is my first night of lonely in my very own apartment. No, 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 stay no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Another World.